This week, we will continue to talk about object-oriented concept. To finish what we left over from chapter nine, then we will moving forward to chapter ten. That's thinking about our programming in objects. So that's why you can see from the textbook. Ah,、uh, we already finished chapter nine, but I still have some example I want to show you. Then we will continue with chapter ten, thinking about the object. So we will design all the program using the object-oriented concept from now on. I will talk about more about the object-oriented concept. For example, we will apply class abstraction to develop the program. Then you already know this keyword, but then we will talk about what are What is the encapsulation? So then we will talk about more about the object, or we say the class relationship. So after you understand this, next two week we will talk about the most important concept as well in the object-oriented concept. We will talk about inheritance and the polymorphism. But the first thing, let's talk about more about the object-oriented programming. So from now on, you need to have your object-oriented thinking when you implement the program. In Java, we are pure object-oriented concept. When we learn C plus plus, C plus plus actually is both. C plus plus start for the procedure programming. Then we add the object-oriented concept. So sometimes people, um, the new programmer will ask. What is the procedure programming? What is object-oriented programming? So the procedure programming actually we focus on the designed methods. Or we say we design the function, and we focus on we solve the problem step by step. So sometimes your problem just a problem. So for example, you want to find the average. You want to find the maximum number from the array. So that is individual for the specific situation you want to solve that problem. So we write a function. But now, when you have object-oriented thinking, you are actually has more. You are not only focused on the array I want to looking for the sum or the average. You are thinking about what is an array, what array can provide. So you think about everything when you start doing the programming, right? Then you are thinking about each entity is an object. You are not focused on functionality only. You see, array. We will think about array is we have multiple element of the same data type. So this array sometimes, yeah, we may need have find the maximum value and the minimum value. So then we have the member method for the array. So that's why when we think about object-oriented concept, we actually group two things together. The first thing, data. Right, your data attribute actually what are in the uh what are in the object. So then you have your member method. What is the behavior for your object? So object-oriented concept always think about one entity, its object. So in this object, we have the data member. One is the data variable. One is the object behavior. That's method. They are all together make different object. So when you program your software using the object oriented concept, you will focus on the operation on the object and the object relationship. So that's why we want to talk about further in this week. So in this week, we will give you more example how to de design an object. On the other hand, you need to write a class. In this class, you have your UML diagram. You need to think about what data attribute identify this object, and this object has what kind of behavior and action. So then you create one class, right? But between different type object. They also have different relationship. They have inheritance relationship that we will talk about next week. But more than that, they have association relationship. 
they will have the ownership relationship. So that's the object relationship we will talk about. If you already learn C++, you know when we write an object, we have a header file. So sometimes this class header file, including the class definition and the implementation. And here in Java, in Java, actually, we are pretty simple. We only have one thing. If we want to define a class, write one Java file for that. And this Java file, including your data field definition and your method implementation. So those things actually is we call the abstraction. What me abstraction? Remember last week when we when I give you an example about circle object, I can define this circle object just in circle.java file. Or I can have a main function, main method associated with this circle object, I can run that. But most of time, the reason we define a class, we want to use that individually. So that's why most common way we see the implementation is we have a one Java file, only define one Java class. So in this way, we can stand alone to use that. But sometimes in our class, our program is very simple. Like last week, your lab exercise, I asked you to write your own class. But one thing is I just want you to have a main method associated with that file. So you only need to submit one file. So that's all depends on the scope of your project, how many Java files you want to write. But in the future, usually in, uh, in the software development, we have one Java file, one class definition. So this one is we call the class abstraction. In each separate is in each Java file, you have sep separated individual class implementation. So the detail of the implementation are encapsulated and hidden from the user. So that's what we call the class encapsulation. So that's mean you see here, because you have one class defined one Java file, right? Of course, you don't release the source file for them. You will compile this file, become a bytecode.class file. So then user can import this class file in their library and use that, but they don't know how you will implement that. From now on, every time I ask you to create or define a class, you need to describe the function of the class. You need to let the user know how to use that. So the collection of method in the field are accessible from the outside class. Then we will tell them how that return type and the method name. So that we call is class contract. We always using the UML diagram. Remember your UML diagram including three parts. You have class name, data field, and method. And also in the data field and the method, you have your variable name or your method name. So that's why we know how to use that. So then, right, so usually you will heard about the, heard a lot about the encapsulation. The encapsulation actually is the implementation of a class or object. They are hidden in the bytecode. Uh, so that's why here user only know how to use that. They don't know how to implement that. So this week we will see more example. The first example actually that we view from our assignment one. At that time, we not really actually use um talk about the object oriented concept. We only ask you to write a program. You will ask the user from the console about your loan amount. How loan for the loan period? So then you can calculate your monthly payment and the total payment. So that's why here, actually, can we think about we should create a loan class? And also you can think about this loan class. According to what we have in assignment one, this loan can not only using for the car loan, can be for student loan, can even for the mortgage. 
because no matter for which kind of loan, they all need to have your initial initial amount, how much money you borrow, then your interest rate, and for how many years it will pay off. So that's why we can calculate your monthly payment and the total payment. So that's why here they are so general, right? So that's why we can create a loan class to represent a car loan or any personal loan. So that's why when we design that, actually, I only need to give you a UML diagram. So now before I moving forward to the next, how about I want you to post the video. I want you to think about when you want to create a loan class, what data attribute we should have this loan? What kind of member method we should have for this loan? So please post the video. So now that's the design our loan class. So from now on, you see, I only give you, I only need to give you a UML diagram for the loan class. You should be able to implement that. That's our loan class, right? Earlier I asked you, what kind of data attribute we should have? Usually the data attribute should be private, right? So right, you see, since you make a loan, I need to have the annual interest rate. I should have the how many years I want to borrow and the loan amount. And the next one, maybe we'll forget, but now let me show you that's the loan date. Uh, because when you create a loan, we need to use this date to start calculating each month which day you will pay the monthly payment and which day is your mature date. So that's how we can have a date object. So then you can see here we have the data attribute and the data type. Right, so then after you have data attribute, we have the method, right? Of course, we can have a default constructor. So since we have interest rate, number of year, and loan amount, then we should have a constructor passing the three argument, make another constructor. So then you can see here, the only one we don't have is date. Uh, because the date, actually we shouldn't pass in the date in the constructor. We should just create the date in the constructor function. Because when you have your object create, the date time being decide. So then after we have those private data, so we have the gadget function for annual interest rate, number of year, loan amount, and loan date. We have setter function for the annual interest rate, number of year, and the loan amount. So then you can see sometimes your loan year can change, your rate can change, but the loan date we don't change because that's the day you start the loan. So then you can update those values. So then here we have the get monthly payment and the get total payment to calculate the loan payment. So that's your UML diagram. And after you have your UML diagram, actually you should to think about how you implement your loan class. So that's why here you should either implement your loan class, loan.java file, or you should download the example we provide you in the demo file. So that's our loan class. So then here, actually, I want you to read through that to see if you have any question. I'll post the video, so write down your question. You should run your program from your IDE, uh, but here, because when I take the screenshot, it's easier to explain. So then you can see here is our loan class. From now on, you should add all the uh, accessible keyword, public or private, for all your class data attribute or your method. You see here we have good example about the this keyword, right? In your constructor, you passing the parameter. Then we're using the same variable name. So that's why the passing argument is the annual interest rate. But we need to assign to our host object annual interest rate. So that's why we need to use this. So when we create a new date, just using this. And also the other good example is, you see here that this, we can call the constructor function. 
So then you're passing the argument. Mean the default constructor 